It's been my best experiences, one of the most fluid and interesting experiences I've had composing music for any media. You're listening to the Ubisoft Game Makers podcast. I'm Charles Adam Foster Simard. When Ubisoft revealed Far Cry 6 last summer, the first glimpse of the game players got was the cinematic title sequence. It's a hypnotizing and atmospheric sequence of images, saturated with color. A tropical island at sunset appears in a crocodile's eye. The spinning wheel of a vintage car becomes a record on a turntable. A glass of rum seen from above becomes the burning end of a cigar. Players were impressed by the visuals of the sequence, but many also remarked on the music that underpinned these images. It's the track you're hearing now. It's called Libertad, and it was written by Pedro Bromfman, the composer of the Far Cry 6 soundtrack. Bromfman was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro and has been writing, playing, and producing music for video games, films, and TV shows for the last 20 years. His past projects include the music for the 2014 movie Robocop, three seasons of the hit Netflix series Narcos, and the video games Max Payne 3 and Need for Speed Heat. Pedro Bromfman joins us on this episode of Game Makers to talk about his work on Far Cry 6, which came out earlier in October. The game is set in the fictional Caribbean island of Yara, with the player joining a guerrilla movement to fight against the forces of the country's president, played by Giancarlo Esposito. Hello, Pedro. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Charles. A pleasure. I'm super excited to talk about the music of Far Cry 6. I find it very beautiful, and I know it's something that players have been talking about since the game was revealed uh, in 2020. Uh, I was curious to just to start by asking you how the project started for you and how you came on board to compose the music for this game. Yes, I've been with Far Cry 6 for over two years now. I was doing some music uh, with Simon Landry, who is a, a music supervisor out of Ubisoft Montreal mm -hmm. for a different game. And he mentioned, uh, oh, there's this game coming up that takes place in a Caribbean island. And uh, he never told me what the game was. I had no idea it was Far Cry or anything like that. Right. You just had an idea of the setting. Yeah. He told me about the setting and he's like, I think your music would be perfect for you. Do you want to submit some some tracks? They sent me some some initial videos of uh, like, you know, cut cutting photographs and graphics from the game along with some existing footage of, of from other shows and then in the background there was one of my tracks playing <laughs> and by coincidence like no one realized that so one of your existing tracks from another project had been had been placed there as as placeholder essentially just as placeholder or something like that yes and I, and, <laughs> and at that point i'm like look my music is already in the game it feels <laughs> it, it feels meant to be uh but then i met eduardo who is uh simon sent some tracks to eduardo who is the the audio director for Far Cry 6 and we hit it off he loved the music um, we really I mean personally we really hit it off and it's been my best experiences one of the most fluid and interesting experiences I've had composing music for any media so you you say it's a it was a fluid experience it was a good collaboration can you say a little bit more about that what what made it so um, particularly special or remarkable in that regard I think we were on the same page from the very beginning, uh, discussing what the music should be. And uh, we had to hit the ground running at first. We had a 10-minute uh, mission that needed to be scored to be submitted. Hmm. So basically, I, I hit the ground running. We wrote that initial those initial 10 minutes. And then we had a hiatus and took some time to really develop it more and see if what we had done would ultimately fit in the game, which most of it actually ended up in the game. But we really took our time after that to develop what the score needed to be for me to get more familiarized with the story. Mm -hmm. I had several briefings with Navid, who's the narrative director. He was like telling me everything about Yara, everything about every character, backstory, <laughs> future story. <laughs> so I, I really got immersed into Far Cry 6. And, uh, and from there, we were able to really develop this tremendous uh, I mean, tremendous amount of music for this tremendous game. You know, it's over three hours of my music alone. Wow. 
when you were starting off on this project, what were your principal sources of inspiration or what's the thing that really drew you into this game? Is it, was it the world or the characters or, or the story? The, the, the story is fascinating. I mean, I did some research and looked into the Far Cry, the other Far Cries, and then also really got immersed into the story. And it's fascinating to see how much work goes into a game like this, right? I, I, I keep telling people it's the ultimate, to me, at least this one has been the ultimate collaborative experience because I was in from almost the very beginning and everything they were doing, the designers, the narrative team, Everything they had to feed me was feeding my creative process. But at the same time, my music was, they were like, oh, this is the theme for Clara. This is the theme for Libertad. This is, and as, as everyone else was hearing the music, that would also influence the way they were designing the game or they were. So it's really, mm. it really felt like we were something I've never done before. I mean, even when you are brought in very early on in a movie or in a game or in a TV show, usually most of it, the story is already there. The, the the design is already there. You already have the look of what the scenes, how the scenes were shot and everything like that. Mm -hmm. In this one, we had very little from both sides. And I feel like everything was built together and really feel like it's a cohesive thing, like it's a part of the same thing. Right, like the game and the music, they were growing alongside each other and, and feeding off each other. Exactly. And I never had to hear anyone else's music in there, you know, I never mm -hmm. had anything that I needed to get close to or that people really loved. And it's like, oh, this should be the sound. Can we copy or do something similar to this? No, everything was conceptualized and created and all the sound exploration that we did, that I did here in my studio, everything was done exclusively for the game and with the game in mind. Yara is a fictional place. It's a fictional island. Of course, I mean, there are some inspirations from Cuba, but there's also inspiration from other places in the Caribbean and uh, Central America. Did you do any research into music from those areas to get a certain vibe? Uh, I, th I think I, I was brought in. One of the reasons I was brought in besides hitting it off with, with the team and also them liking my music is enormous experience with, with Latin music in general. I'm from Brazil. But I've lived in, spent time in Argentina. Uh, you know, I've studied, I've always been into uh, Caribbean music and, and Cuban music. Uh, I've recorded a, in my 20s, early 20s, a, a Latin jazz album with uh, mostly like salsas and merengues and things like that. So it's really been a part of me forever, even though Brazilian music is a different type of music. Yeah. I play a lot of those, those instruments, uh, the cuatro, uh, also instruments from the north of South America, Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, like charango, ronroco, and all those instruments ended up being brought into this score. There, there wasn't much research as far as styles of music or because I was so familiar with it, but right. there was ex extensive research and exploration as far as how we would treat those sounds. You know, we wanted to anchor the music in Latin American and Caribbean music. We wanted to have that, that root to, to, take from but at the same time we wanted to do something new so we were i was doing you know extensive research here and, and sound exploration how to process acoustic instruments how to mix the latin american percussion that we were recording with analog synths and and the soundscapes i mean i spend a, a lot of time creating different soundscapes and mm. and, and things all that came from an, a, an acoustic origin, so like coming from an acoustic instrument originally and then getting processed and reverbs and delay and just creating this, you know, this mass of sound that could sit behind the tracks or really uh, color the world we were, we were living. What was the goal of of editing and um, transforming that sound in the way you're describing uh, instead of kind of using it more straight, I guess. I, I think it's used straight in like the, the diegetic music. So there's a lot of street music, like you, you're walking, you, if you're in the open world and you, you walk by a place, there's a band playing in there and it's playing traditional Caribbean music, you right. know, or there's, the, I know a few artists were brought in to, to, to do the more traditional work more really exactly what would be playing in an island like Yara. But our objective was to really do something 
hip and cool and modern and differentiate. We didn't want just the, the players to be listening to to salsas and merengues and boleros <laughs> all day long. You know, we didn't really feel that would illustrate the game properly. So we wanted to have some influence from that that music and instrumentation, mm -hmm. but then really create our own sound and do something hip and something, you know, blood pumping that would work with the action that would work. And not only that, we differentiated Yara or we split Yara. Yara is split into three different regions. So the Western region, the central region and the Eastern region. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to give each of those regions its own uh, sound, you know, musical sound. I try to keep the entire score cohesive so it doesn't sound like you're jumping around and it's something completely new. Right. But we really focused on the Western region is the more acoustic, you know, it's where the population, the, the Yarns who have been there forever, the traditional Yarns, the traditional families live. And so we went with the more acoustic, the more traditional sounding music. The central region is where the, the capital is, is where the, the president lives mm -hmm. and the, where the military is. And it's more urban and it's more gritty. So we really introduce like urban elements and hip hop elements into the music. There's a band that lives in the central region in the game, within the story that's called Maximas Matanzas. And they're a hip hop band, a hip. So we felt like we should introduce some of that element into the score. And then the eastern region is where the industry, where the factories are, where they produce whatever is, is for the viviro that's produced in Yara. And so we went with the more industrial sounding, more processed sounding, like a lot of metallic percussion and heavy ambiences. And so it's, we really did a, try to do a different musical treatment while keeping the cohesion of the whole, of the whole score. So that's fascinating because it means that what you're seeing in the game and the characters that you're meeting and the the geography of those regions uh, and the themes I'm sure that they're explored in the story are kind of bleeding into the music that you're hearing at the same time. Yeah, for sure. And we really tried to to illustrate that in the way that we were able to interpret that musically and hopefully the the, the audience can feel it. But there's definitely a finger like a, a signature for each of the regions, mm -hmm. musically speaking, for each of the, the Yaran regions. Now, this game explores some pretty pretty intense themes. Of course, there's there's a revolution during the game. It's it's all about resistance, about guerrilla fighting. Were you inspired at all by those themes as well? Or did, did were there emotions that you wanted to kind of translate in the music you were composing? Yes, very much so. We actually started the... The process after those initial 10 minutes, we we started an exploration of the themes, the main themes of the game, as far as story themes like the revolution, oppression, and then some of the characters. So we were creating, they were asking me to create two minute pieces about what the revolution sounds like, what mm -hmm. the oppression that Anton uh you know, forces upon his people. What what it should what what the, does it sound like? What's your musical interpretation of this? And then we moved on to the characters. Okay, we need a theme for Anton. We need a theme for Clara. We need a theme for uh, uh, for Diego. So we we were exploring all of this initially, without actually scoring to picture, just musically saying what should be the sound of this and. I'll tell you, I mean, that's why also I was saying it was such a, a, a pleasurable, collaborative experience. A lot of times it takes a while for you to find the sounds and you send a few things and then you get some pushback and it's, oh, no, it's not exactly this. Let's try something else. But with this game, I feel like 90% of what I sent in, sometimes I would send more than one option, but 90% of what I sent in ended up in the game and the team was really excited about, you know, it, it's it's really been... I think we were on the same page and, and I probably was the right choice for this game because it's very normal in my profession that we have to redo things multiple times or that some scenes need to be retweaked and reworked. Mm -hmm. And in this game, it's, it's, it's really flowed very, very smoothly. Do you work with any partners as well to help you create the music? I assume you have some, some musicians who, who play some of the instruments? 
I do. I I actually play most of the the instruments in the game. I love really? doing like the exploration of bringing instruments here that I don't even know how to play and just finding ways to to make it play. But I usually record percussionists because I use a lot of percussion in most of my score. And then I have uh, Juan Carlos Enriquez, who is a great composer who has been my my right hand man for a while. And uh, he's really, I mean, an intricate part of the process. He's always helping me. Uh, I do some themes, I pass it over to him. He develops them or fits them into a scene sometimes when I'm busy, mm. cr- busy creating those scenes or he comes up with ideas and I develop that. So it's, it's um, yeah, he's a very helpful and talented person who's a part of my team. So basically the score for Far Cry is, is the two of us, to be honest, uh, wow. do, doing the whole thing. Yeah, We had time though. We had two years to work on the game. What's the mood and the process like when you're when you have that much time? Is it is it almost like a jam session where you're kind of experimenting with the instruments, seeing what comes out, and then you can feed that back into the into your tools? Or are you re- you're I assume you're not really like sitting down to to compose to write. Uh, I am. I I, mean, I always like to do like sound explorations in the beginning. So I'll get a bunch of instruments and then just do a huge recording session and then edit the parts I like from that recording session and then bring that into contact like a, a software instrument inside my my the software that I write music mm-hmm. in. And then I can spread out those ideas throughout the keyboard played in different tones. So we create a lot of software instruments were originated here in my studio and specifically thinking about Far Cry and those instruments end up being used throughout the the whole score you know so there's a lot of exploration in that big the beginning of like sound exploration finding the sounds Mm. that will populate the game but ultimately when i start writing themes whether it's to picture or just based on conversations i have with the team it's usually yeah me sitting down to already write but write using those tools that i've already created and that sound that i've already determined and developed here before and right you're equipping yourself with the with the with the sounds that you need and the notes that you need and then you're working from there yeah exactly You mentioned that obviously this is your third game. You've you've done a lot of projects for film and TV, and you mentioned this time constraint often for for film and TV projects, where you know the edit is done and you're composing to that screen. Can you explain a little bit more about the difference between the process for composing music for uh, an interactive medium like video games versus TV and film? There are a few differences. I'd say, I mean, there's a part of games that's very much like composing for film and and TV, which is when you're working with the cinematics. In this case, yeah. the cinematics came in the very end. I think we did probably scored over 40 minutes or 50 minutes of cinematics. And that's very much what I'm used to. You know, you get a scene and you see where the music should come in, mm-hmm. where the music should should come out, where it needs to build. And then... Yeah, everything's already timed, so you're, you're writing to a... Exactly. And you'll always hear the music that same way in that same scene. You right. know, it's not going to sh- shift every time. The aspect that's really different about games is are the missions and the open world, because you're creating music for a mission that a player can take two minutes to go through, or a player can take 15 minutes to go through. Mm-hmm. So we have to take all of that into account. We have to create loopable cues, so loopable pieces of music that can go back to the beginning and start playing again if the player is still in that same area. Mm. But at the same time, we have to introduce new elements and introduce new things to keep it interesting so it doesn't just sound like the whole, the same thing over and over again. Right. And also we have to be able to build an intensity. So we have to be able to have that piece of music sound very minimalistic and small when you're just in stealth mode and you just looking at the the opponent the the combat hasn't really kicked in and then if you're battling two opponents it has to have an intensity if it if you have more opponents coming on then you have to release and the way we do it is through separate tracks that we just pile on top of each other so it's like the different stems that help us build a track so it can play with just one stem when there's only two enemies or you can have three stems playing at the same time if there are 10 enemies or you can have up to five stems 
playing at the same time if you're battling tanks and helicopters and all of that. Right, so you're delivering kind of layers that have to sound good on their own, but that also have to be uh, stacked together and sound good when they're stacked together to add that intensity and adjust to what the player is doing, right? Exactly, exactly. And the game engine, I mean, they program the game engine to release my music and these stems according to what's going on within the game. And that's been a fascinating project. It's the first time I was also brought into that aspect of the game engine and the programming and the I, the other video games I had been, been involved with. I was just delivering music and they were putting into the game. And this one, I feel, I went to Toronto. They showed me how the, the music would get integrated and it allowed me to think even further about possibilities and ways to keep it interesting and ways to, to vary intensities and, and, and things like that. Of course, what the players can listen to when they listen to the soundtrack is kind of these finished, edited tracks of the music from the game. I was wondering if there was a track that you were particularly proud of or, or one that you found particularly challenging? Yes, there were there, there are several tracks. Uh, I mean, there are the, the three main themes for the game are Anton's theme, which is played on a cello and it's like the, on, on, the, on the lower register of the cello and it appears over many cues and many spots that where you're hearing a piece of music and then all of a sudden you hear Anton's theme on top. Probably my favorite piece of music is is called, uh, in the soundtrack, it will come out as uh, Viva Clara. And it's Clara's theme. And Clara is one of the key figures of the revolution. Uh, the player meets her uh, right in the beginning of the game and decides to follow her into this this battle to free Yara from, from Anton. And Viva Clara is a very... It's a, a, a sad, melancholic piece, but at the same time, it's got this this drive and hope for the future. You know, exactly like the character itself, we wanted to illustrate that. And I, I really feel that that piece came out beautifully and, and works the way it was supposed to. For me, when listening to the soundtrack, that song kind of pops out a little bit. It's It's a little bit more acoustic maybe than the other tracks. I was interested how you came upon that one and, and um, if there's anything that you can share about the process writing that music. Yeah, it, it came very fast. They sent me the video for a specific part where Clara is a key element in a scene and they're like, oh, can you write like a two minute piece for what Clara should sound like? And we never discussed whether it should, like I said, whether she is a part of the Western region, the central region. I mean, she's Yara, you know? And yeah. But I, I felt like it, it needed to be, even though she's a warrior and she's a go-getter and she's the one sometimes really driving the, the revolution and, and, and seeing what should be next for, for all the, the brave men who are fighting with her. She's a very introverted and, and living in the past and a little melancholic and a little, you know, so I felt the acoustic guitar. So it's primarily nylon string guitar. There's some punctuation with the, the charango and piano, and then a lot of the soundscapes that I mentioned that I created for the game that are originally created in acoustic instruments, but then it gets processed and it gets a lot of reverb and delays, and then it becomes this wall of sound in the background, you know? And I, and I love to have like that wall of sound in the background and then play the guitar lines and guitar chords on top. I think it, it really works well, and that's basically what Viva Clara is. And then the third main theme is uh, about uh, the revolution. So it's the, the revolution theme, it's Libertad. That's the one we can hear. Um, it was it was first revealed uh, during the cinematic sequence when the game was first revealed, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's the one that will be part of the, the opening, uh, the, the cinematic sequence that opens the game and also that was revealed early on as a, as a teaser. 
And that was one of the pieces we created for the, the revolution, you know, and the, that initial exercise of, of trying to find the music for the sound of the revolution rooted in Latin American and Caribbean music, but having the grit and the, the, the blood pumping element, you know, the heavy percussion and then the, the charango, the ronroco turns into a electric guitar and it builds as the revolu we see the revolution build throughout the game. Is it hard to come up with melodies for um, themes like that? Because obviously they, they have pretty catchy melodies. I, I wonder how, how difficult it is to, to come up with those. I love it. I grew, I grew up in music with, with music for music, so mm -hmm. listening mostly to, to music itself and also uh, listening to a lot of Morricone so all of, and all of his scores. I mean, back then, all of the, the films and TV shows, they were so melodic, right? We used to yeah. have huge themes you you come out humming and and whistling for sure exactly and little by little we've sort of gravitated away from it a little bit i think modern film scoring there's much less melodic elements there's much more like colors and and soundscapes and and they're present all the time before there used to be much less music in a movie but when it came in it made a statement and it was playing loud and people could leave the theater humming the melody you know i i agree that my job is to be in the background and score, help help the experience and help tell the story. Not necessarily people need to leave the, the theater humming, humming the melody. Sometimes a, a movie doesn't really need a, a theme or a melodic theme, and it's more about soundscapes and color. But every time I have an opportunity or someone, a team really pushing us to create beautiful melodies, it's it's the best because that's what I'm. I think I'm best at and what I really started in music for you know creating these these melodies so mm -hmm. whenever we have a chance to to work melodically like this it's just it's it's great and and eduardo really wanted eduardo and navid all of them really wanted these iconic melodies to populate the game and to illustrate the characters you know that we were seeing well uh pedro thank you very much for joining the show today and for talking about the soundtrack for far cry 6 Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you and, and best of luck with your next projects. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. The Far Cry 6 Complete Music Original Game Soundtrack, composed by Pedro Bromfman, is out now and available wherever you listen to your music. You can find a link to it in the show notes. This episode of Game Makers was produced and edited by the team at Engel. I'm Charles Adam Foster Samard from Ubisoft. Transcripts of our episodes are available on Ubisoft News. For more from Game Makers, remember to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening.